Greetings, everybody. This is Dr. Abdullah, another proud and honored contributor to the Black Congregation channel. Today, we're going to have a little brief conversation about how the Shenandoah, if I got that right, Shenandoah County Schools in Virginia have voted to restore its Confederate names to two of its schools. Let's roll those clips. Breaking overnight, a controversial move in Virginia to restore the names of Confederate leaders at two schools in Shenandoah County. Just after midnight, the school board voted five to one on this issue. It's been nearly four years since the school's names were changed from Stonewall Jackson High to Mountain View High and Ashby Lee Elementary to Honey Run Elementary. The resolution now restores those Confederate names. The vote came after hours of testimony from the community. Everyone is going to think that we're racist rednecks. Yeah. And that's not okay. I don't like the name Mount View. It's too generic and it's boring. <laughs> and Honey Run sounds like the name of a moonshine operation. The school board attempted to reverse the names back in 2022, but the change was stalled at that point by a tied vote. Again, the names are back to Confederate names. According to an article in the Virginia Mercury entitled Virginia School Board Restores Confederate Names, on May 10th, the Shenandoah County Board School Board reversed a 2020 decision by a previous board to rebrand two schools previously named after Confederate generals, Turner Ashby, Robert E. Lee, and Thomas Stonewall Jackson. In 2021, the schools on the Division Southern Campus that included North Fork Middle were renamed from Stonewall Jackson High School to Mountain View and Ashby Lee Elementary School to Honey Run. To some, the Confederacy represents a heritage of Southerners, courage against the Federal Union and fighting for the rights of Southern states. Others view the Confederacy as defenders of slavery and a foundational aspect of America's history of racism. Let's stop right here. We always hear that the Confederacy was fighting for the state's rights, southern states' rights in particular, but we never hear them talk about the right to do what? Well, let's go ahead and say it, the right to own slaves. Moving forward, four days after the decision when Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin was asked by a reporter to comment on the reinstated Confederate school names during a press conference following the passage of the state's two-year budget, he said he was unfamiliar with the topic. He added that he believes those decisions are at the discretion of the local school districts. I've been very clear all along that we need to teach all of our history, the good and the bad, and that we can't know where we're going unless we know where we've come from. But to the specifics of the decision, you have to forgive me because I haven't been very close to them, said Youngkin. Stop. You're not familiar? One of the tactics of racism, anti-black racism, white supremacy, is to deny, 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 also to lie and deny its existence. How are you the governor in the state of Virginia and not know such a monumental decision is being made unless discussions and conversations like this are being had regularly and you already know that if it were not going to be Shenandoah County it'd be another school district if it not already has happened according to recent data from the Department of Education white students make up most of the total student enrollment in Shenandoah schools at 73 percent ahead of black students at 2.9 percent and Hispanic pupils at 17 percent well stop there we know, let's going backwards, that most oftentimes those Hispanics, they probably classify themselves as white, but they're being used as 70% just for the basis of the census. Now, if you have black students being represented as only 2.9%, my question is, why are those 2.9% black students even there? Stop forcing yourselves into white spaces, black people. You are already knowing, you're already familiar that the majority of the collective mindset is that they do not want us there. I'm going to say that again. The collective mindset of the white supremacists in particular is that they do not want us in their spaces. That is why it's incumbent upon us to create our own. Moving on. I feel really sad for the students, both black and white and Latino, who have to deal with leadership that is backwards looking and not forward looking. 
that doesn't believe that the Confederate names for these schools are wrong, Scott said. But we will continue to fight to make sure that the real history is known and that we will get better from it. Well, uh, we know that everyone has a problem with CRT, critical race theory, and they say that it teaches one group of students to hate another group of students. But when you memorialize the Confederate generals who fought for slavery and the right to own slaves, are you not teaching one group of students to laud supremacy over another? I think it's just pretty much par for the course and typical that one group gets the leg up, one group benefits from the welfare system that we call white supremacy, while another group, as usual, is disenfranchised and subjugated. I'm a black student, and if the names are restored, I would have to represent a man that fought for my ancestors to be slaves. That makes me feel like I'm disrespecting my ancestors and going against what my family and I believe, which is that we should all be treated equally and that slavery was cruel and an awful thing. I think it is unfair to me that restoring the names is up for discussion. People don't take the time to think about students like me who would not be proud to graduate from a school with the name Stonewall Jackson. And we know what group we're talking about. We're talking about the dominant society is always getting that leg up and us as the foundational black American community, we're always pushed to the bottom. I'm going to be honest. I, I need to tell you this. I don't feel bad for everyone. I only feel bad for those children have to be subjected to this level of disregard, this level of racism, this level of systemic racism within the academic system because their parents want to feel as if they have arrived. Maybe their parents want to feel as if they're more comfortable. They don't want to deal with the black community. But as you can see, they don't want to deal with you and they're showing you by the policies that they put in place. I'll say this almost every video, no matter where you see me, where you hear me, no matter interviews I do on my own channel, I'll say this. The black American community needs, to, cre needs to create, maintain, and fund our own institutions. Why? So that we can rise to the place that we need to be. Once again, this is Dr. Abdullah giving you educational news from a foundational black American man's perspective. If you like what you're seeing, like what you're hearing, please come on over, subscribe. Tell me, what do you think? Do you think this is part of the course? This is just something that they're doing because they know that we're not going to do anything because we're just loving to be at their spaces. I mean, hell, who am I? What do I know? I'm just another brother on the internet giving his opinion. Peace.